Okay, guess we're on. Um, I'm breaking uh, this video up into three parts because it was getting so long. Uh, now we're doing CD music AM transmitter uh, using a 500 kilohertz uh, IF filter or resonator to be more precise. Um, and it oscillates at 1.377 megahertz, hits the AM band. Okay, so you're going to ask, well, wait a minute, it's a 500 kilohertz resonator. Why is it 1.3? Uh, good question. Maybe a harmonic? Harmonic. Maybe this isn't really oscillating at 500 kilohertz. Okay, I think I've covered that in uh, part one. Okay, but this sounds very good, uh, but I'm almost deaf. Anyway, so let's, let's get to it here. On the CD player, I have an old boombox. Oh, this is for headphone jack, okay? If you have a, a rack system and you have a receiver, uh, an amplifier and you have speaker outputs don't hook the speaker outputs up to this this is the wrong impedance this is for a headphone jack okay you can control the volume uh, lower is better because if you have this too loud it will introduce distortion into the transmitter and that goes right to the receiver alright so turn that down and then uh, uh, turn the volume up on your receiver. Uh, if you want to make it more efficient, then you have to work on your uh, antennas. Uh, okay, so the output. Now with the output jack, um, get the one that's uh, not mono but stereo, and it has two little black insulators on the jack. It's like a three, three point five millimeter jack. I should have a picture somewhere. Uh, like the the first metal part from the tip and then the second metal part uh, those are your left and right channels and then the metal part closest to the the part you can hold with your fingers that's ground so you have to scrape the wires, find the wires at the other end of this cord for this jack <clears throat> and scrape the uh, enamel or lacquer off of these wires. Usually they're color coded like a green or a red. Uh, ground might even just be bare. But you have to make sure you can have a connection there and solder. That's important. All right, so you have a left channel and a right channel. And a ground. I didn't draw a ground on there. I guess I could. There, there's my ground. Okay, that's coming off the connector though. That's uh, like like what are you drawing? Okay, makes sense. Okay, maybe I should have added that earlier. Anyway. So those go to uh, the protoboard if you're doing a protoboard. Uh, if you work your way up to uh, actual circuit board, you have to make uh, little connection pads for those. <clears throat> now, you've got two capacitors. Positive ends goes to the left and right channel. And the uh, negative side connected to each other. And they go into pin 3 of the 386. 
I've got pin 2 and 4 are grounded. Uh, pin 1 and 8, I have a 10 microfarad capacitor there to increase the gain. Uh, this is for uh, 9 volts that powers the 386. Optionally, you can add a capacitor to pin 7, which makes it extremely loud. Um, you may not really need this. Uh, too much amplitude uh, causes distortion. So I think I only use this on the FM version. Uh, okay, output of the 386 is pin 5 that goes through a 10 micro Henry choke. Now that res resists uh, current flow and for some reason it really helps this circuit. This amplified audio from the CD player music uh, likes this choke right here. It doesn't like a capacitor, doesn't like resistors. It likes a 10 micro Henry choke. Um, all right, that goes over to the emitter of the crystal oscillator or resin uh, resonator. See, this works with a an expensive crystal also. Now, when you start changing the values, you start getting up higher, uh, like 4, 8, 10, 25 megahertz. You're going to have to change these values to get it to work, to get it to oscillate. Um, so in this case, with the resonator, or around one megahertz, uh, the 300 micro Henry choke, which uh, I bought some, and they're kind of big, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and then down here, I have a 50 ohm one watt, and that gets warm. Uh, I've accidentally touched that and went, whoa, what the, oh, and I went, oh, yeah. And on uh, one transmitter I built uh, like this, I put a, a little tiny box fan on the back. Uh, but adding, adding fans can add uh, a high-pitched noise from the motor going to your transmission. So watch that. Okay, uh, 47K biasing resistor for the uh, transistor. Uh, what else? Uh, I had to add a, a 151. Now it's just like the other one, the voice. Well, you may or may not need that, depending on the value of that. Uh, also, you can add um, this capacitor to the collector, uh, from the collector to ground, a point zero zero one, and <clears throat> that acts like a uh, filter, cutoff filter, or whatever. Did I explain that on the first one, part one? Maybe. Anyway, without that capacitor, you're putting out 1.377 megahertz. When you add that cap, uh, it gets the oscillations real close to the resonator or the crystal that you're using. I think I explained that in the first part one. So this is part two, CD music AM transmitter. Uh, antenna is the same, uh, add a cap there. Now of course here's, you have a lot of leeway here. Make a real long antenna, uh, tune your antenna to get the best uh, match uh, so you can get nice uh, range. But again, this is just for the, the house, the garage, the yard. Um, don't interfere with uh, uh, hand bands, broadcast, uh, transmissions, or reception. So I think there's only uh, a short little range, 100 and something kilohertz, where you don't need a license uh, for RF use. I have it written up, written up over there, but I I can't I can't see it from here. All right, let's see if this my shirt. Works. I was working on an invisible shirt. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, with this switch, 
tied to another circuit, I think I can make this invisible. There it goes. Let's get this. Yeah, almost. Okay. AM at one point three seven seven. With a five hundred kilohertz resonator. I might have it up just a little bit too much on the transmitter. Okay, that's enough.